With Amy Coney Barrett poised to shit all over RBG's legacy, the news has been full of talk about abortion and the fate of Roe versus Wade. And one of the side effects of doing what we do is that you're never all that happy about job security. Most everything in the news has been terrifying and depressing and way too easy to make Margaret Atwood comparisons to. But I did want to highlight one of the bright spots, and that comes to us from Democratic Senator Gary Peters from Michigan. So in case you haven't heard the powerful personal testimony he shared with Elle magazine, I should summarize his story. See, back in the 80s, he and his wife were expecting their second child. But about four months into the pregnancy, they got bad news and learned that the fetus wouldn't survive the birth. And the same hospital that told them that also told them that they couldn't do an abortion because it was against their policy. And while he doesn't specifically say Catholic hospital, those are the only ones with that policy. So his wife was sent home with little more than a pat on the back and a good luck with your miscarriage. Well, she fails to have a prompt miscarriage, and that puts her health at risk. What's more, it seriously endangers her potential to have more kids in the future. So they apply for a special exemption to the hospital's no abortion policy, and they're turned down. Because fuck what's best for her, and fuck the fact that it's a non-viable fetus. Her suffering was obviously part of God's plan. Well, eventually, Peters managed to get his wife into a different hospital where they were willing to help her. But that isn't an option for everyone. And if and when they confirm Mega Karen to the Supreme Court, it'll get that much harder. And when Peters was asked why he shared his story, he said he wanted to remind people that this isn't some extreme circumstance. People deal with issues like this all the time. And for a look at where he's headed, I suppose we should bounce over to Italy real quick for a terrifying story. See, abortion is technically legal there, but most doctors and nurses are terrified to perform them since Catholics own an even higher percentage of the hospitals there and won't employ former abortionists. And we learned this past week that even when a woman does manage to procure an abortion, the church might still find a way to publicly shame her. You see, Catholic churches have been offering to take the fetal remains off the hands of clinics who would otherwise have to pay to dispose of it. And once they have it, they bury it with a tiny little cross for a grave marker that includes the name of the woman whose abortion is buried there. As one of the victims of this despicable practice said, quote, I can't tell you what a horrendous feeling it is to find a cross with your own name on it, end quote. And don't worry about us women. I'm sure we'll be fine even after the new SCOTUS strips away our rights. After all, we're the majority. Women can just band together. And I'm sure that female activists will focus on important stuff like this rather than sending angry emails to Frank's Red Hot castigating them for putting out a commercial where somebody says, I put this bleep on everything. Oh, wait, this just in. I can go fuck myself. Until Amy Coney Barrett makes that illegal too, I guess. And while we wait for that, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. 